We now have access, <laughs> password, and username to the DeviantArt tracker. In there, we have the 911 phone call audio. <gasps> wow. Oh my god, we have to listen to that! <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited! I love this <laughs> Friends, welcome back to Board AF. It is very good to see you and a happy spooky season to you. We are playing something appropriately spooky. We are diving into another Hunt a Killer board game. This one is called The Class of 98. Mm. We're solving a 90s crime, so it's probably involving like big telephones and see-through technology. Trips. Someone's got a briefcase and they got to run with it really far. Yeah, yeah. that's it. And you know, know. absolutely. Yeah. Plaid. <laughs> if you enjoy us playing these kind of spooky crime-solving games, the video. Please, thank you, we appreciate that. Subscribe to the channel as well, mm -hmm. because uh, we, we do Board AF all the time. We do many of them frequently for you. For you. Let's get into it. Uh, they gave us some little supplies. We've got like a little black light Ooh, and cool. a notebook. I think we should crack into the envelope. Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh my I god. Excited. Okay. Is it a fresh envelope too? Uh -huh. Oh, that's sexy. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Love the smell of a fresh envelope, right? That's yeah, really good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, a little koozie. Shoot. Oh, cool. Oh my goodness. Something's happening. Is this, is this <laughs> Spock? So Sage has a problem. I love the murder. <laughs> <laughs> that's your problem. Hello. Hi. Per recommendation by my trusted colleague, I'm reaching out to you for assistance in investigating a recent homicide. <gasps> the victim is Charles Mac McDonough. 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 <laughs> a pharmacist in Chestnut Hills, Illinois. He was murdered on the night of his high school reunion, or rather, <gasps> our high school reunion. <gasps> I've always had the tendency to hyper-focus on my work, fame, and neglect to befriend those around me, Charlie included. But I remember him as a kind person, always surrounded by the same tight-knit group of friends who always called themselves the, quote, hacky pack. Unfortunately, they are now our prime suspects. Antonio Villar, record shop owner. Arthur Hughes, high school history teacher. Robin with a Y Dupree, Ooh. farmer. Uh, Nicholas Matsukas, neurologist. Susan Lee, veterinarian. Aura McBride, lawyer and Charlie's cousin. Nita Patel, freelance journalist. And Gavin Nash, plastic surgeon. <laughs> Lastly, we must consider Sarah McDonough, Charlie's wife, whom he met in college, an additional suspect. That's a lot of people that I just listed. <laughs> I implore you to examine this case with an objective eye and fill in any gaps that I may overlook with your help. There's a chance I'll finally get a good night's sleep. I'll touch base with you soon. Michelle Gray, private investigator, Gray Investigations. That's the best I've ever wow. read anything. Yeah, yeah, let's open this shit up. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a little high school yearbook. Mm -hmm. Oh, cute. Oh, cute. The class of 98. Aw, oh, Chestnut that? Falls. Everybody has a thing. Oh this my is god, a very fun. small map. Okay, a little teeny, little tiny, little tiny. Little tiny. Oh, yeah. You can barely see it. Small. We do have, and I'm gonna pull this out so we can like detach it. We have wow. like a log of times. <laughs> oh, cool. Okay, um, just looking at all the signatures in the back of this, this is Charlie's book. I don't know if, okay. we, already, if we already knew that. No, we didn't know that. That's great. I'm, I'm seeing they're all addressed to Charlie. Hate to break meta right now, but like the actors they got for this, incredible. <laughs> um, okay, this is what Robin, with a Y, one of our suspects, uh -huh. has written to Charlie back in uh, 98. <clears throat> to the cutest, sweetest, coolest boyfriend ever. <gasps> Ooh, the no. ex-girlfriend. Yes. Robin isn't his current girlfriend, is that correct? No, wife? he's got a wife, and the wife's name is, of course, Sarah McDonald. McDonald. Our first date with you, you took me to see The Craft. Don't know what that is. <laughs> they um, ask you how you are, and you just have to say time. that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get it. And then we have a clipping of the newspaper. <clears throat> um, one side says, farmer finds sheep mysteriously slaughtered overnight, and the oh. other side says, small town murder highlights the death of small town morals. Who <laughs> wrote that story? Is that Patel, the journalist? Yeah, oh, that, yeah, yeah, it's by Nita, Nita Patel. Patel. The location is corner of Poplar Street and Willow Lane. Ooh. Is the pause. location of the death? This is the location of the, um, the homicide, yeah. Poplar and... Willow, down here, all the way down okay. here. Okay. Oh, wow. So okay. this is the location of the murder? We wanna... At 10.52 p.m., the sheriff called me to request my assistance at the crime scene on his behalf. I left from the local bar at 10.58 p.m. and arrived on this, at the scene at 11.16 p.m. I spoke to the deputy who was still on the scene, reporting officer Deputy James Goff. 
Before I left the scene, I observed the placement of the evidence markers and the situation of the vehicle. The passenger side door was left open and the interior light and headlights were left on. The keys were in the ignition. So the location description in this area, Yar. secluded area known as the Grove to locals, frequented by teenagers. Empty bottles and other used items are often found there. It was dark and dry. Let's see, there's a lot of trees in the area that are close together, which hinders visibility to the scene. Good place for murder. Mm -hmm. the tire marks at the scene match the make and model of tires on the car belonging to Charles McDonough. Gravel indentations show footprints leading away from the car at a long stride. Long wow. stride. Imagine this guy must be tall. Someone's going like, like, or just like really yeah, big steps, it. like moonwalking it. <laughs> At 10.17 p.m., dispatch received 911 call regarding the discovery of a body in a car off Willow Lane. The caller identified herself as Ori McBride. Reporting officer uh, Deputy James Goff was dispatched and arrived at the scene at 10.39 p.m. She stated that she was the cousin of the victim and had seen him alive approximately one hour previously. At the scene, the victim was sitting slumped in the driver's seat. Oh, they were um, the car, okay. Yeah, driver's side seat with obvious bruising and abrasions around the neck. Evidence was marked in bag. The cause of death is unknown. Mm -hmm. The assessment is that it's strangulation, but they mm -hmm. have not, I guess, figured it out yet. Okay. And then time of death was estimated to be 9.35 to 9.40 p.m. Great. Let's do Aura's statement then, because Aura is specifically referenced in that. Charlie and I are cousins on my mom's side. We grew up in town together, but I moved away after college, and he came back here to settle down. This was the first time we had seen each other in a couple of years, so we had talked a lot during the reunion. I lost track of him at some point, but we all agreed to meet up at Dimitri's at 10, so I thought I'd see him later. I volunteered to help Artie clean up after the reunion ended. I took care of the gym and he cleaned the cafeteria across the hall. I finished up a little after 9.45. I was going to head to Dimitri's then, but I saw I had a missed call from Susan's work number. I tried calling her back, but got no answer. Susan wouldn't call for no reason. She's not the talkative type. During the reunion, we talked about her issues at work and I saw her step out early. I was worried she was having some trouble, so I drove out to her clinic. On my way, maybe around 10.15, I saw some headlights shining just off Willow Lane. It looked like someone had parked at the Grove. Uh, I thought it must be someone I knew since the Grove was a popular place to hang out when we were teenagers. I parked on the side of Willow Lane and walked over to the car when I recognized it as Charlie's. The passenger door was oh. wide open. I saw Charlie leaning back against the driver's seat. His head tilted at a weird angle. I, I thought he might have been sleeping, but he didn't respond when I tapped on the window. The driver's side door was unlocked, so I opened it and I shook him, but still no response. He was pale and had bruises on his neck. I checked his pulse, there was nothing. My phone says I called 911 at 1017. I can barely remember what I said to the operator. I was in such panic. I don't remember how long it took for the authorities to come. His skin was still warm when I found him. I got there too late. So it says that she finished up cleaning at 9.45. It's suspicious that she was like the first one at the body and that she was yeah. just like, I see a car, let me just pull over and stop. Mm -hmm. Right. But well, she was looking for Susan who had called her and she missed the call. That's true, she could have been so worried about maybe Susan. maybe Susan mm -hmm. called to say, hey, I just killed Charlie. You're right. Hey. Do we know Let's anything about to... Susan yet? We've got Susan's statement. Oh, Susan. Susan's statement. Okay. Oh. Susan is a veterinarian. I arrived at the reunion at six and spent most of my time catching up with everyone. Hmm. I saw Charlie briefly. Later in that night, I spoke to Aura about the lawsuit I'm currently involved in. Uh -oh. Our conversation left me with some serious questions about the process, so I decided to leave the reunion early around 8.40. I drove to my office at the vet clinic to look over some documents my lawyer had sent me. Then around 9.10, I called my lawyer and we spoke for half an hour or so. After that, I called Aura to ask for some more legal advice, but she didn't pick up. This was 9.45, I believe. I left my office and paced around the clinic for a while, thinking I should try to call Aura again soon. I'd planned to meet up with our friend group at Dimitri's at 10, but I wasn't in the mood at that point. It wasn't until later that night that I heard what happened to Charlie. So she was by herself. Mm -hmm. She tried to call at 9.45. And that's right after Charlie would have been murdered. So she is unaccounted for during that time. Yeah. yeah. And she had plans to meet up with them and Dimitri later that night, but and decided not to. Honestly, maybe just wasn't in a like happy party mood. Mm -hmm. Maybe after wasn't in like a murder. yeah. I mean. Yeah. Same. Like mm. you know, a silly goofy mood. <laughs> Arthur Hughes. I was at school until 9:45. I was cleaning up after the overwhelming success of the reunion, which is no surprise, seeing as I put it together. There were a few minor hiccups, but thankfully no one made an ass of themselves. Truly a remarkable feat, given that Gavin Nash was in attendance. Oh. 
We know Gavin Ooh. Nash is an ass, and yeah. also this person. That seems right. <laughs> Ara volunteered to stick around and help put the tables away. I assume she did so, but I was mostly straightening up the cafeteria and ensuring that all of the fundraising money was properly accounted for, so I didn't see much of her. Mm. As I was about to leave, I noticed the custodial closet was ajar. I took a peek inside, only to see it was in utter disarray. I did my best to pick things up, but mm. now I'll have to apologize yeah. to Mr. Fitzpatrick on Monday morning for how inconsiderate my fellow alumni were to his workstation. Regardless, mm. I still made it to the Taverna right around 10. I was worried that I'd be late, but Antonio was the only one there. The others showed up over the next 20 minutes or so. Everyone seemed normal, except that Gavin showed up with soaking wet hair that was dripping water onto his what? shirt. Gavin showed up soaking wet. Weird. Okay. I guess the perpetually pretty boy felt he had enough time to go back to the hotel and shower, but not enough time to properly use a towel. Anyway, we were still waiting for Susan and Aura to arrive when we got the phone call from Aura with the terrible news about Charles. I imagine it'll take some time for all of us to recover from this tragedy on what should have been a perfect night. Can we all just agree that Arthur is a total nerd? Oh, absolutely. Total nerd. Oh my god. Absolutely. Oh my god. Interesting about the janitor's closet. Yeah, yeah somebody f***ed up the janitor's somebody closet. Or f***ed in. Did it, mm -hmm. f***ed out of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the goal by the end of this box is to eliminate one suspect okay. as definitely not So it. we won't know the killer this time, but we'll know who we think the killer is not. Hopefully. Yes. Hopefully. That's, yeah. yeah. Okay. Gavin Nash. Such a, Ooh, such a like, Gavin Nash. Gavin Nash. Nash. Yeah. I got to the reunion when everyone else did. <laughs> I don't know. Look up when it started. Oh, I hate him. Oh, oh, I hate him. Oh, I'm gonna write boy. Gavin douche. Yeah, douche. Yeah. We yeah. all douche. I talked to Charlie, but I wasn't interested in whatever he was blabbing about, so I talked to some other people. It was great to come back and see where I started out. It's crazy how much happened since high school, but I'm doing really well, unlike some people. Ooh. I don't mean like Charlie, but I guess that counts. Wow. What? I left at nine, I went to my hotel, I wanted a nap. Maybe I drank too much, I don't know. I was having a good time, I didn't know what would happen. I left the hotel and got dinner, oh and God. I know Nick showed up a bit after. Hmm. I remember because his parents wouldn't get me anything to eat before he got there, and I was starved. I finished a cleanse, it was brutal. It's too bad Charlie's gone, he used to be a lot of fun. Oh my god. Murder comes out of passion and this guy doesn't care about anything. No, yeah. especially strangulation, which <laughs> yeah. we all know is like the closest and most passionate form of murder. Yeah, that, we all that know. That's stabation, right? Yeah. yeah. That is yeah. stabation, the stabation. official term. <laughs> yeah. Antonio's statement is rather short. I left for the reunion at about 5.45 p.m. I told Luis, my son, I would be home late as I planned to meet up with some old friends at Dimitri's Taverna after. I saw Charlie at the reunion, but we didn't talk as much because we had seen each other earlier that day at the pharmacy. I left the reunion at about nine, maybe a little after. I was in the parking lot for a bit. I thought I saw Charlie drive off with someone, but I don't know for sure. I arrived at the dinner too early. I was the first one there. I wanted to catch up more with everyone, but even Artie didn't show up for a while. Then I found out Charlie was dead. I don't know anything else, I'm sorry. Hmm. Ooh, here are school records, that. disciplinary uh, for Gavin Nash. Gavin picked up a uh, younger student and slammed him against a locker. <gasps> Gavin then proceeded Aggression. to hold the younger boy uh, off the ground as the student attempted to escape. Yeah. Here's the next one, and this is five months later. Uh, Mrs. Kramer arrived at school on Wednesday morning. She found Gavin Nash and Charlie McDonald, ooh, oh. dumping bags of sand onto the gym floor. When asked oh. what they were doing, Gavin responded that they were setting up the beach volleyball court and invited Miss Kramer to find another teacher so they could play a doubles match before class. Oh my God. Gym classes had to be held outside for the rest of the week. It's oh, pretty cool. Shit. So what we'll do at the end of this is we'll rule somebody out who we think isn't it. And then we'll go into the second one. Aura, right now, I think is a little bit of a red herring because it would be very obvious to be like the first person at the, you know, scene, scene the of the crime. crime. Arthur. I think Arthur could have done it. He's got a lot of issues. He's still really wrapped up in high school. And he gathered everyone there, which is also very suspicious if mm -hmm. he had some vendettas. I will say he mm. was cleaning up until 9.45. There are others there cleaning up as well. Possible alibi at the time of the killing. Right. Yeah. But again, possible because like you said, they didn't necessarily see each other when they exactly. were cleaning up. Exactly. Yeah. So You're I'm correct. like, if he was just assumed to be cleaning up, mm -hmm. um, I, I consider him still a suspect personally. Susan, Susan didn't say much of anything. Um, Susan has a lot of uncount accounted for time for when she went to her veterinary office, right. which for some reason her legal paperwork was there. Um, and it would be, she would have passed him on the way there. Mm -hmm. hmm. I think she's a little sus. Mm -hmm. Antonio really didn't have anything else and he was like apologetic about it. He was the one who got there early. It is confirmed that he got there early because he was there when Arthur arrived. Mm -hmm. 
He also Sounds left at nine o'clock, so there's time missing. He said, I left the reunion at about nine, maybe a little after. I was in the parking lot for a bit. Mm -hmm. I thought I saw Charlie drive off with someone, but I don't know for sure. I arrived at the dinner too early. I was the first one there. So he has no um, alibi. There's no one there to check on him. Correct. We have no alibi for Gavin. Mm -hmm. So I don't feel comfortable ruling him out yet, but it also doesn't make any freaking sense that he would kill him because he just the like, doesn't The alibi care. we have is with Nick's family, or yeah, is it Nick? Yeah, the alibi the we have is with Nick's family. It was about Nick's family, but we don't have any statements. But from that's Nick's what I'm family. saying. We're gonna have to yeah. get those, and we also yeah. don't have a statement from Nick. Uh huh. Right. In that's general, probably in the next box. Which is what we're hoping for, but we have to understand that yeah. that Gavin was there early, so left at nine as well, went to yeah. the hotel for a nap, don't know when they woke up. Yeah, and came back wet from the shower, which like, if he's really particular about his appearance, does seem odd. And that is all of them. So the only person I'm feeling pretty confident about right now is Aura. See, I disagree. Really? I do. What are you feeling confident it's about? Just that, it's just that impossibility it's of It's the five minutes the to me calls. is more suspicious than Gavin's missing time. Okay, we have to rule someone out so we can go to the next box. Mm -hmm. Who do we think it isn't? Arthur and Gavin are my two probably no killies. Okay. okay. So uh, should we rule out Gavin then? Because it seems like everyone sure. was the next most confident in Gavin? Sure, yeah. Gavin has no motive. Gavin doesn't give it. Yeah. Okay, we're ruling out Gavin okay. uh, Bye, for Gavin. now. We're gonna get into okay. the second box of this and get a little more information. All right, we're getting into box number two, which will contain more evidence. And I wanted to say this is a part of a multi-episode pack, so Hunt a Killer, you should definitely sponsor us. <laughs> <laughs> we love this game. Hey, Hunt a Killer. <laughs> From one killer to another. <laughs> <laughs> there is oh. the class ring and the mints. Wow. Cool. I'll put those out for everybody. Are there actual mints in there? Yeah, open Find up the out. evidence. Yeah, let me just. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, let me just really... Here we go. Here we go. <gasps> Bam. Ooh, There's wow. something in there. Oh. This is Dr. Foster MD General Clinic where uh, oh. he had seen Arthur that day. Patient's name Arthur Hughes. This is Arthur's prescription that was found in Charlie's car. We um, this is for a diazepam. Uh, dispense 60 for anxiety. We have we now have access, <laughs> password, and username to the Deviant Art Tracker. Okay. Uh, and in there we have the 911 phone call audio. <gasps> wow. Oh my god, we have to listen to that! <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited. I love this. <laughs> it's so much fun. Okay, uh, can you tell me where you are? I can't believe it. He's dead. So please send help. C can you? There's new uh, testimonies over here. <gasps> oh, um, yeah, we've got Sarah. In researching suspects, oh, I came across a past Ryan? conflict between Charlie and Susan, oh. which seems to stem pr from a workplace issue. There's a legal complaint filed by Susan. Oh, that makes Susan Ooh. really suspicious if she was actively stressing about this lawsuit yeah. that was between her and Charlie. And she ain't that yeah. far from the murder scene. She isn't. She passed She's where he got close. murdered. And uh -huh. this is an email with the subject line, you f up again. Oh. Susan Lee. Charlie, this is the last time I'm going to write you about this. I've given you the benefit of the doubt before because I knew way back when you always meant well. But the seriousness of the situation has gotten out of hand. After the delivery today, I noticed once again that the dose was all wrong. Poor Miss Henderson's pig woke up in the middle of surgery. How dare you jeopardize my practice? This isn't just about the health of the pets and the livestock of this community. This is my livelihood. I know you, Charlie. I'd like to believe you are still a good person, but I know what you do. Whoa. So that was from Susan. And then Charlie wrote, I'm so, so sorry for all of this. I hope Flufferton is okay. I heard pigs are pretty resilient anyways, so it should be okay. I guess I just wasn't paying attention. I promise it won't happen again, Charlie Mack. You're never paying attention and your promises mean squat. He's dealing drugs. Yeah. Next time this happens, I will be taking legal action. Cool. Sketch. Mm. Interesting. So it seems like Charlie has been working for Susan, which is something we didn't know for some reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So we have four more statements. Let's start with Nicholas, because that's the one that we didn't have last time that we yeah. were really concerned All about. All right, so let's get right okay. into it. Yay. I had a good time at the party. It was nice to see everyone again. I mean, not everyone. Not that I wasn't happy to see people, but I had just seen Charlie and Artie a little while ago because they live in town. I was more than happy to see the people who don't live here. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I'm not being clear again. I wanted to talk to Charlie about something important. No, nothing major, it was just a personal thing. Anyway, during the party didn't seem like a good time. I tried to catch him after, but he was already gone. I knew I would see him at my parents, the Taverna, so I wasn't too worried. I didn't feel like talking to my mother while we waited for the others to show up, so I went to the bar instead. I had a drink and then went over. By that time, most of the others were already there, but not Charlie. We waited and he never showed up, and now he's never going to show up. Can we be done? I don't like thinking about this. Mm. Next statement, let's go to Nita, who we really have not even thought about. I got to the reunion when everyone else did, I suppose. It was a fun time, nice to see everyone again. Charlie seemed to be in good spirits, and I remember him saying something about seeing everyone at the Taverna after the reunion was over. Hmm. I had no reason to believe Charlie wouldn't be there later. Who's your lead suspect? Has the autopsy been conducted yet? Fine, but who in town do you think is qualified to make the public statement? And words travels fast around here. It would be more efficient to just tell Pam at the quick ease. No, I'm not deflecting. I went back to the hotel because I left my wallet and then I went to the diner. Oh. I'm not sure when I got there, but I know Nick was very late and his parents were waiting for him to show. Have you ever questioned Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Matsukas yet? So, uh, something that's connected for me is the diner is the Taverna. It's the same thing. And oh, then yeah. Nick's parents obviously own it. Mm -hmm. And Nick was very late. And Nick is claiming hmm. that he was that no one saw him because he was at the bar. So one Nick of is them. looking sus. The next one is from Sarah. That is the wife, McDon. <laughs> <laughs> um, the last time I saw Charlie was a little before six on the night of the reunion. I wanted to go, but Mackie, Maggie had come down with a nasty cold, so I decided, decided to stay home. Mm. He gave me a quick peck on the cheek and then tucked in Maggie. He kissed her forehead and say, bye, Magpie. I love you. I'll see you soon. Aww. She smiled and said, bye, Dad Pie, and then went back to sleep. Dad and then he left. Oh, no. Good writing. I keep hearing that exchange over and over again. I dreamt about it. It's so painfully ordinary, like Charlie could be walking through the door any minute. Maggie doesn't understand what's happening. She knows her daddy is gone, but I'm sorry. I was home all night. We only have the one car. Nothing remarkable happened until I got the call from Aura and then the police. I just feel like I'm drifting. Like this is all some horrible dream. Maybe I'll wake up tomorrow and come down the stairs and see Charlie and Maggie watching cartoons and eating cereal out of the same stupidly large bowl. But I won't. He's gone. Just gone. And I don't know what I'm going to do. Please let me know if there's anything else I can do to help. Please. Oh. Okay. okay. Heartbreaking. Reasonable. That was intense. Yeah. That was a very like, you know, Wife of the deceased statement. Yeah, like that kind of made seems... me feel real. Yeah, we had some feelings yeah. there. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, yeah, we Hit experienced me. something Hit the other me right day. In the feels. Um, and the last one is from Robin. This was his high school girlfriend. I didn't see Charlie much during the reunion. I tried to look for him after it ended, but I couldn't find him. Well, I figured he left right away to go to Dimitri's or maybe wanted to stop by his house beforehand. I'm not sure. There was some time before we were all supposed to meet, so I went home to rest a little and freshen up. I got to Dimitri's at about 10 past 10 o'clock. Gavin came in after me, Nita after him. Nick was pretty late, which I found weird. I thought he'd come early to help his parents or something since they own the diner. But then again, I didn't really think about what everyone else planned to do. I mean, between the reunion and the diner, I thought I'd see Charlie again in an hour or so. So, you know, sorry. I wish I could be of more help. Nick is seeming real suspicious right now. Nick is right pretty now. suspicious right now. Rando just found this. I'll, <gasps> keep, I'll keep the biz running while you're away. Drugs. He was, doing, he was dealing. He was dealing drugs in high school. Wow. And so I'm trying. What I'm trying to do right now is look at the handwriting here and see what it matches on Whoa. here. And match it up. From what I can tell, just right now, I'm going to do a double scan. But it looks like it's Antonio. Mm -hmm. Ooh, okay. This handwriting right here. The the T matches the the T style. Antonio also left the reunion early, nine o'clock. Saw okay. Charlie leaving. Uh, mm -hmm. That time missing could be related to their business. Um, I have the full autopsy report. I have three okay. pages of autopsy report. Detected large singular contusion to the front abdomen, cranial bruising in the upper left side of the head. Hmm. So he was beat up. The duration of the last meal intake was between one and two hours before death. So what time anything. is the buffet? The buffet was 6.45. And the buffet was 6.45, yeah. Okay, so then yeah. two hours before, one to two hours, that would be seven to um, eight, they ate. Um, superficial <laughs> and deep tissue abrasions. These injuries are indicative of manual strangulation. Head okay. suggests light blunt force impact. And injury to abdomen uh, suggests pressure from blunt rounded object. Yeah. Got hit with something. I would just like to show this. Uh, Are you talking about this? Down. Talking about that right there? Uh huh. That right there? Yeah. Can we see this? Is yeah, yeah. Right it's this right. The, um. It's very important right there. <laughs> oh, that's the ooze. 
That's the oos. <laughs> yes. It's the oos. Uh, that's all. Um, and this is a, I don't know if you guys have, did you guys talk I about I have not right? seen that yet. Uh, it's another Nita Patel story, of course. Um, mm-hmm. And it's, I think, what the lawsuit is. There was a um, a negligence in like him treating a horse, like the the kind of medication he gave a horse, and then the horse mm. died. So this is the lawsuit, mm-hmm. basically. Susan wanted a certain amount of diazepam, which was the same prescription, the anxiety the prescription, yeah. uh, which is part of the anesthesia for the horse. Uh-huh. Um, it was a severe overdosage, so he wasn't skimming off. Wow. He just wasn't paying attention, I guess. And so the horse got overdrugged and then drowned in its drinking trough after surgery. Okay, wow. so that's a horse, not the because there was a it's pig a that didn't get enough. Yeah, and there was a horse right. that got too much. Mm-hmm. Right. That's Whoa. So maybe. Uh, sorry, this is me just throwing out obviously theory speculation. Maybe yeah. Charlie actually uh, got confused the drugs that he sells versus the drugs that were for the animals, possibly. Um, the Who last knows? piece of evidence here, well, second to last to the photos, mm-hmm. uh, is a love letter. Uh, to Charlie from Robin on like the most <gasps> perfectly 90s paper. It has oh, little bubbles amazing. on it, like real Lisa <gasps> Frank notebook kind of stuff. Um, from February 13th, 1998. Wow. Charlie, this is my fifth time trying to write this, so fingers crossed it actually turns out right this time. Today, I realize what I want the rest of my life to look like. Don't freak out, I promise this is a good thing. It's pretty clear that my parents will need me to take care of them, uh, take care of the farm sometime soon. They aren't young and I'm the only kid. It's hard, but I'm good at the work. I'm all right knowing that I have a future of long days and dirt under my nails ahead of me. That's just the way my life is going. And then there's you, you, your eyes, your smile, how you squeeze my fingers when you hold my hand. I'm so (laughs) proud of you and your acceptance into UC, but when I try to think of my life, I can't imagine you not in it. That's not true, I can, but it hurts to think about. I'm not going to be stupid and say that we've never fought, you've made bad decisions, and I always lose my temper. We're not perfect, but the past is in the past, and we're too good together to let stupid things get in the way. Wow. Today, I thought about what could be our early mornings in the far off future, when I come back from milking the cows to make you fresh eggs and coffee, Mm. and one day there'll maybe even be kids to tell your mom and dad fell in love in high school too. Lifelong sweethearts like it's a movie. But I love you so much that I have to shut my eyes so tight and when I open them I see stars. Okay. Okay. Weird kid stuff. Sure. Promise me that my future will have you in it. All my love forever, Robin. Oh, wow. So, Robin. so sweet. She was Spoiler alert. Real hung Thing, up. Yeah. I would be open to cracking open a third box of evidence if we feel like we've got a handle on what we have in front of us to get a little bit closer if y'all wanted to. Cool. I think we can handle it cuz we're very good detectives. Yeah. Yeah. Let's add in box number 3. No help. <laughs> oh, you need help. Stuck. It's a pretty necklace. Oh, y'all, is it the opal one? Or yeah. Cool. Uh, in this, it says to carefully identify the autopsy versus the toxicology. So we're going to receive toxicology. Also mentions that uh, Michelle believes that both the opal necklace and the pair of novelty socks may have been there prior to the ninth, but not totally sure. Oh mm-hmm. my God, an yeah. affair? <gasps> Possibly an affair. Maybe you're right. he was Possibly having an affair, an affair with Robin. Robin's Robin. In town. Oh wow. My. If you're the wife and you're going to kill them perfect night reunion when it seems like but all these other people are there. she did sound genuinely distraught. I agree. We have nothing I to do. I agree. Yeah. Okay. So, toxicology report. He was positive for diazepam and nordiazepam. He was positive for those? He was positive. Did he have alcohol in his system? Um, alcohol, yeah. Uh, 0.12. Wow. That dude's f- up. And he was driving. 0.08 is, yeah, legal limit. So not only is he drunk as sh- he's off some, you know, medication. Yeah. And then that he had a little bit of... recreational. A little bit of creatine. <laughs> Yeah. Just a little bit of creatine wow. as well. Everyone except for Gavin and Antonio were drug tested. Hmm. Uh, Antonio, Antonio was not drug tested. Was not d- drug tested. Okay, that's going to be sketch. Uh, Antonio said that he did not believe drug testing was relevant to the case and was concerned I was focusing on the wrong things. Oh. Refused to be tested. Interesting. Gavin insisted that drug testing would be an invasion of privacy, appeared agitated and tense. With Charlie's bank account, an unusual pattern of checks to and from Antonio were found. Oh, yeah. they're still in business together. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. They had so that unusual checks going. and does not want to be drug tested. Here mm-hmm. are the checks. So yeah. on the 14th of November, sixty-eight hundred dollars mm-hmm. from Antonio to Charles, sixty-eight hundred, and then the following mm-hmm. day, one day later, uh, Charles then pays Antonio fifteen dollars, uh, and then again Antonio. Uh, now a month later pays Charlie $20, uh, and then uh, back again, this is now two days after that one, uh, $5 from Charlie to Antonio, so it's weird. A lot of money and then a little bit of money, but both are in periods of back and forth. From Salamander Pond on Main Street in Chestnut Falls. So those, that's gonna be Charlie mm-hmm. uh, going to a pawn shop, selling some of his personal items. Okay, so this was on 6 dollars oh. okay. mm-hmm. 
Item description, gold ring, CFHS logo. That's that class ring. Um, amount financed, $50. Fees, $8. Annual percentage. Items pawned are only redeemable by the holder of this ticket. Any items pawned are subject to be sold by pawnbroker when no payment has been made. I don't know what this means. So um, what that means is that that ring wasn't in Charles' possession after they graduated. So being in their car means that at some point they would have or someone else would have purchased it out of pawn. So either he purchased it back off of that or he defaulted on it, never paid what was owed and someone else was able to purchase the class rank. I mean, it's the reunion too, so I think that would have sentimental value. Maybe someone brought it as a gift. So, mm -hmm. with the information that we got from the first box, yeah. we think that Gavin is the least suspicious. I think the shower might be a bit of a red herring because he didn't have blood to wash off and he doesn't seem to be interested and his alibis we're pretty mm -hmm. relatively at the restaurant solid. With other people. With parents, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We've ruled out Gavin Nash. Yes. Yeah. Aura McBride, the cousin of the victim. Mm -hmm. Yes. She was the first one to find him. She was going to see Susan, mm -hmm. which does make sense to have passed on the way. The phone call, I think, was pretty convincing. Also consider that Aura is, I say in cahoots, but on the side of justice for the horse scenario with Susan. Yeah. She's not actually on the case, but she is consulting, right. giving She's Susan advice. Mm -hmm. yeah. Susan Lee. Susan has tons of motive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's, she was like, this is my livelihood, you schmuck. Yeah. And he was really messing it up. So mm -hmm. Susan is like, and she's nearby, yep. and she's yep. unaccounted for during that time, very much so. Yeah. yeah. Antonio. Antonio, of course, has the child. Mm. Honestly, there's not much to be said about Antonio other than in high school, we know that he was. Um, working with him. He was the one in right. the yearbook who was probably selling We assume, we don't know for sure. We don't know who was selling. But based yeah. off of handwriting. It's the only other handwriting in the book that has the same letter P. There is missing time in Antonio from nine to 10, and yes. Antonio is the last person to see Charlie alive. Right. So I do think it is still suspicious. Still a suspect. Mm -hmm. Okay, Arthur Hughes, uptight, still really invested in everything that happened in high school. Uh, there is his prescription in the car, of course. Um, but it was tucked in, in a place that it doesn't seem like you would like drop it by any means. Mm -hmm. um, in some way, he is tied to the drug situation. Right. Yeah. And as for time, supposedly he was cleaning up. We cannot confirm that, but he does have a place that he should have been. Yeah. Sarah. Sarah's the wife. Sarah has a very convincing statement. Yeah. Um, we don't feel like it's probably her, though there could be an aspect of jealousy with the potential affair that we're yeah, seeing affair, could be happening. Robin. Robin makes a high on the list. Robin. Robin's got a lot of motive. Um, yeah. We know that there's a woman's necklace in the car, mm -hmm. uh, which was just on the passenger side in the place that he was attacked from in some capacity. There was uh, something to do with nails, which again, yeah, doesn't necessarily mean a woman, pretty. but. So Robin's pretty suspicious. Nita, I have no suspicions about Nita personally. Maybe I should, and maybe that's exactly what they want us to believe, but like, yeah. Nita's just trying to cover the story. Yeah. Right. Has no no motive mm. whatsoever. Story yeah, the for. yeah the only motive would be her obviously wanting a good story. And then lastly is Nicholas. Hmm. What do we know about Nicholas? Uh, that he's missing. He's been missing. He was the last to arrive at the dinner. So Nicholas is very suspicious. So it looks like right now then our top suspects are Susan, mm -hmm. Robin, and Nicholas. Yeah. Antonio's not clear. No one else is clear. Yeah, Robin, Nick, and Susan. Hmm. We're cool. closing in. I yeah. love it. We're closing in, but uh. we're living it on a cliffhanger. <laughs> ha! You got got. Yeah. <laughs> sucks. It sucks for all of us. Thank you so much for watching us uh, make some progress on this murder case. If you enjoyed it, please let us know. Let us know if you want to see another part of this. We can do a part two and we can finish this. We can find out what happened to Charlie. Justice. Charlie. We deserve to know. Uh, and hey, if you did like it as well, giving a thumbs up also lets us know that you enjoyed it. Subscribe, click that notification bell, get notified every time that we post a new video. I would like to do a part two. I would like to know what I know. happened. Yeah. Oh my wow. God. Sorry about the cliffhanger. We love you very, very much. And if you love us, you should check out this video over here. Look at that. Look, look, look that one. And there. that one over there. Oh my gosh, there's ah. another. Whoa. Go do it, go do it, go check it out. Oh wow. You know what would really help us what? do a part two? What? If Hunt a Killer sponsored us, <laughs> that's not gonna work.